Hi and welcome to a new video here on my channel. In a previous video we tested the ASUS ROG XG Station 2 which is an external graphics card solution you can uh, hook up to your laptop using the Thunderbolt 3 connection which is basically using for PCI Express lanes. So it worked quite nicely but during the testing especially when I was testing players unknown battlegrounds you could see on the top left corner while I was monitoring all the data of my laptop that the CPU was always hitting the thermal limit. So I have an Lenovo X1 Carbon Generation 6 which is using a Core i7-8550U. It's not the biggest CPU, there is also one of those laptops available with a 8650U which is one step higher but it's only I think 100 or 200 megahertz faster and it's a lot more expensive so it was not really an option for me to get the biggest CPU because this is totally fine for any kind of work solution. So in today's video we will try to tune the X1 Carbon a little bit, see what we can do to prevent the CPU from throttling all the time. So as I said before we had this issue in PUBG and also Cinebench and whatever we tested that the CPU was always throttling. So in the end we will replace the thermal paste in this laptop with liquid metal. But before we do that we switch over to my laptop. You can now see the desktop. You can see that I already opened CPU Z Core Temp and Intel XTU. So first of all Core Temp is really interesting so I'm obviously running OBS in the background to record what you're seeing but the base load is really low so we're talking around 5, 6, 7 percent on the CPU cores and you can already see with this very low load which is consuming between 8 to 10 watt you can see that the CPU temperature is already hitting 65 to 70 degree Celsius with this very low load. So yeah, the thermal solution of this laptop is really not great. It's I mean, it's obvious, it's an ultrabook, you have almost no space for the cooling solution, which is also fine. I mean, those CPUs, they can run forever at those temperatures. It's not that you need 40 degrees Celsius. A lot of people, they feel better for themselves personally if their CPU is running 20 degrees Celsius less. But really, I mean, those temperatures, technically, they're not an issue. But obviously, it's a lot better if we can lower the CPU temperature, let's say, by 20 degrees Celsius, because in the end, the CPU will clock higher constantly. So what we see in CPU-Z, if we just right-click, is that the CPU is basically an idle running always at 3.7 to 4 gigahertz across all cores. Obviously, this situation will change once we apply load to the CPU. And I opened Intel XTU, which is a really nice tool if you want to adjust anything on a notebook because we have even the opportunity to adjust uh, the power target. We can adjust CPU core voltage, uh, system agent voltage and all this kind of stuff, which we will do after we placed the liquid metal on the CPU because in this current situation, it really does not make any sense. Um, yeah, we simply run a benchmark now and take a look at the data. So um, there's this graph on the bottom which is extremely helpful. You can enable a lot of monitoring details. So CPU utilization, temperature across uh, all the cores. So package temperature or the individual core temperatures you can monitor the frequency and if it's thermal throttling, which you can see here. That's basically the yellow line and that's what we can see all the time on the CPU. So. We have power limit throttling, current limit throttling and thermal throttling. Power limit and current we can disable using Intel XTU but it doesn't really make sense to me because you can always see that the CPU is also thermal throttling. So if we would remove the power limit or the current limit obviously the CPU would become even hotter so it would thermal throttle even, even earlier. So it doesn't really make sense to adjust it now, we will do it after we placed liquid metal on the CPU. But looking at the temperature in core temp, you can see that all the cores are constantly running at around 90 degrees Celsius and you can see it spiked up even to 95 degrees Celsius on the first core, which is, yeah, it's, it's just completely at the limit. And if we take a look at the clocks in CPU-Z, you can see the typical CPU clock would be something like 2.3, 2.4 gigahertz. Obviously, sometimes if the CPU just throttled, it can ramp up back to 3.7, 3.9 gigahertz, but only for like a second, and then it drops back down. So really, CPU is running completely at the thermal limit for the moment. So that's why we will open this laptop, um, remove the cooling solution, take a look at the cooling solution if we can, if we can remove it, and then we will replace the stock tim with liquid metal. So I will set up the camera a little bit closer to the table, so you have a close-up to see what we're doing on the X1 Carbon. 
Opening the X1 carbon is actually really simple, especially if I compare it to my T460P. So all we have to do is remove those five screws from the back. And then I would recommend that you use some of those plastic opening tools. I used the one from iFixit. They're actually available at Case King. I will put the links in the description. So in case you're looking for them, it should be easier for you to find them. The tools are made from some very soft plastic, so you can be sure there will be no damages or scratches from those tools on your device. So just go around with the tool from the left and the right side and also from the back and release all the notches. After you're done with that you can just remove the back of the laptop and we can access the cooling area. Removing the cooler is also really simple so all we have to do is remove the four screws which are mounting the CPU cooler onto the CPU and then we can remove the whole heat pipe cooler. Once we took off the CPU cooler, there is some kind of black isolation foil which is glued to the PCB and the CPU simply peel it off to access the CPU area. So here we have the whole cooling solution. It's actually quite fascinating that we can cool the laptop just with this small heat pipe cooler. And you can see there is the thermal paste where it has direct contact to the CPU and this hole is where the chipset has no direct contact which is also quite interesting. Then we have the heat pipes and we have the fins that are actually just in front. It's also really, really interesting that only those small fins in front are cooling the entire machine. So let's go over the components in this laptop quickly. So in the middle we have this multi-chip package. So in the middle we have the CPU which is still covered in thermal paste which we will obviously clean. And on the right side we have the chipset. So so on laptops we often have those multi-chip packages and on desktop the chipset would be on the bottom right of your motherboard. This whole thing is called KB Lake R and I think there's also KB Lake U and KB Lake U even consists of three chips total and on KB Lake R we have just the CPU and the cache. On top we have the memory which is soldered on here so you have to decide in front if you want to have 8 or 16 gigabyte then we have the NVMe SSD on there. We have a Wi-Fi module and here in the area on the bottom we have the VRMs that are powering the multi-chip packaging or the CPU. So now we will remove the thermal paste from the CPU and I always recommend to start with some kind of dry cloth and not directly with some kind of cleaning fluids because personally if you straight start cleaning with some cleaning fluids it's always a big mess and just starting clean with a dry cloth is a lot easier and then just use some cleaning fluids like acetone or alcohol afterwards.